Hello everyone and welcome back to the Fluctus channel. Military machines must be able to operate at extreme temperature ranges in wet and dry conditions. To reach this stage, they pass through a phase of testing at McKinley Climatic Laboratory. Today, we show you inside the U.S.'s coldest laboratory, where massive helicopters are tested at extremely cold temperatures. McKinley Climatic Laboratory, established in 1947, is a facility for evaluating the effects of harsh weather on aircraft, weapon systems, and other military equipment. By replicating various climatic situations, it ensures operating reliability and safety. The laboratory assesses performance in heat, cold, humidity, and other environmental conditions, providing critical data for the defense and aerospace industries. Aircraft and craft like the Landing Craft Air Cushion, or LCAC, are placed on its test stand, and a test of climate-controlled tests are run on the craft. For example, the engineers can run freezing cold conditions at minus 10 degrees with rain. The tests can then be repeated in conditions similar to the extreme heat of East African deserts. Most aircraft developed in the USA, NATO, and other allied nations end up at McKinley Climatic Laboratory for testing. The F-35 Lightning II was not reported as operational until it had passed all tests at McKinley. F-35s were placed on test stands 12 feet from the ground and were subjected to relentless simulated climatic conditions. In the chamber here, we have the ability to completely control the environment that we're going to sub that we subjected the F-35 to. Kinley Lab, they have seen virtually every aircraft in the Western world for decades, for the last number of 40 years. Other innovative testing includes covering UAV, or unmanned combat aerial vehicles, aircraft like the MQ-9 Reaper in the snow, and then timing how long it takes the ground crew to remove the snow and prepare the aircraft for flight. This is where having a controlled testing environment comes in handy, instead of waiting for it to snow somewhere else. We can simulate uh, all type of environments from minus 65 degrees Fahrenheit to 165 degrees. Uh, solar loading, snow, as you can see today, freezing rain, rain, sand, dust, pretty much anything Mother Nature can throw at you. A commercial A350 XWB is the first Airbus airliner to undergo adverse weather testing at the United States Air Force's McKinley Climatic Laboratory in Florida. The company's MSN-2 developmental aircraft was subjected to a temperature range of 45 degrees Celsius to negative 40 degrees Celsius to evaluate several aircraft systems, including in-flight entertainment, air conditioning, galley, water, and waste systems. A combat search and rescue, or CSAR, helicopter, like the HH-60W Jolly Green II, needs to operate in extremely diverse climates to save downed airmen and special forces under any conditions. That is where McKinley once again comes in, making sure this lifeline can get to stranded air crews under any type of condition. From McKinley, the guides for maintaining and operating aircraft in extreme conditions are written. In this way, Maintenance teams know which parts of the helicopter are most likely to be influenced by adverse weather, and they can be checked by the maintenance teams before flights. Armed with this knowledge, U.S. military aircraft take to the skies, knowing what to expect with regard to the natural environment. Certain climates necessitate additional components. 
Airmen from the Rescue Generation Squadron methodically install new skis on the HH-60W helicopter as part of a lengthy testing procedure. This endeavor entails analyzing and altering the modifications needed to firmly attach the skis while ensuring they align with the aircraft's landing gear. To handle landing on softer terrains, the team takes accurate measurements and assessments, looking at issues like weight distribution and ski alignment. The testing step comprises simulated scenarios to examine performance under various settings. This method is crucial for boosting the aircraft's operational versatility. It allows it to land effectively on a variety of surfaces while remaining stable and functioning. Rescue operations in the Arctic require sophisticated coordination and specialized expertise to overcome the problems provided by extreme weather. Personnel, such as Alaska Air National Guardsmen, participate in training missions to improve readiness for real-world emergencies. Pararescue jumpers are often deployed from aircraft such as the HC-130 Combat King at high altitudes using parachute techniques like HAHO, or High Altitude High Opening. or HALO, or High Altitude Low Opening. Once on the ground, teams cross difficult terrain to reach pickup points where helicopters, such as the Pavehawk or Jolly Green 2s, facilitate transfer and evacuation by employing techniques such as hoisting procedures. Operating in Arctic circumstances poses unique obstacles for helicopters, like the CH-47 Chinook, necessitating precise preparation. Their pre-flight routines begin far before the flight crew set foot on the ice tarmac. Given the difficult conditions, rigorous inspections are critical. The aircrew begins by inspecting all key systems to ensure that the helicopter's dual engines are operating properly. Cold temperatures have a significant impact on engine performance, so they give special attention to the auxiliary power unit and heating systems. One outstanding characteristic of Arctic operations is the Chinook's ability to operate in tandem rotor configuration, which provides unrivaled stability and lift capability at high altitudes. This design is critical because it enables us to maintain control in turbulent winds and thin air, which are prevalent in the Arctic. The tandem rotors offer the necessary lift without losing agility, allowing for efficient travel over uneven and sometimes unpredictable Arctic terrain. In these cold temperatures, the Chinook is outfitted with specialized skis for landing operations. These skis are specifically intended to distribute the helicopter's weight equally across snow and ice, preventing it from sinking into softer terrain while still providing a secure landing platform. Before takeoff, the air crew confirmed that the ski attachment mechanisms are secure and functional, as they are crucial for safe landings and takeoffs on icy fields.
The CH-47 Chinook's sturdy construction and adaptability make it ideal for Arctic operations. Its heavy lift capabilities enable the transportation of troops, equipment, and supplies, which is a normal part of Arctic missions that frequently include rescue operations or supply drops to isolated places. The capacious cabin can be modified to carry huge payloads or for medical evacuations, making it ideal for various mission profiles. Once airborne, the Chinook's powerful avionics and navigation systems shine as they guide the aircrew through the Arctic's sometimes featureless white expanses. They rely on GPS and other technological technology to keep on track because visible landmarks are scarce and far between. Throughout the flight, regular communication with the cockpit and other crew members guarantees that even if weather conditions change suddenly, they are prepared to adapt and respond fast. Despite the hard conditions, flying the CH-47 Chinook in the Arctic is quite satisfying, according to their air crews. Its design and engineering withstand extreme cold and high altitudes, providing the durability and efficiency required in some of the world's most demanding settings. Helicopters are tested for survivability in unexpected crashes. The CH-46, identical to the CH-47, undergoes rigorous crash tests to assess airframe durability and safety measures. As part of the Transport Rotorcraft Airframe Crash Testbed, or TRACT program, NASA's Langley Landing and Impact Research or Landier Facility conducts full-scale crash testing on the CH-46 and other helicopters. Preparations take years, with a focus on equipment setup and data collecting tools. The aircraft is dropped from heights of about 30 feet to simulate real-world impact conditions. These tests evaluate structural integrity and crashworthiness, allowing engineers to build safer helicopters. At the Landier facility, helicopter fuselages outfitted with crash test dummies are also used to mimic crashes and investigate their effects on human occupants. Helicopters are suspended and dropped from great heights to mimic catastrophic crashes. Inside, crash test dummies, both standard and specialized with simulated inside organs, are outfitted with sensors to collect impact data. This covers the acceleration, velocity, and forces involved. Instruments within the chopper collect data from 160 channels, which researchers use to understand the crash dynamics and potential injuries better. The findings contribute to developing helicopter safety features by identifying weak points and evaluating safety improvements, such as energy-absorbing seats. Another form of test at the Landier facility is a vertical crash test, which includes dropping a helicopter fuselage portion from a height to investigate its impact resilience. Researchers conducted a test involving a 10-foot drop of an ex-marine helicopter fuselage. The goal was to examine new materials, specifically a composite subfloor and a polycarbonate floor. Sensors collected data on impact dynamics, such as energy absorption and structural deformation during the test. The configuration allows for assessing the material's effectiveness and protecting occupants during an accident. This early test provided critical information for developing safer helicopters and informed subsequent full-scale crash evaluations, ultimately improving overall aircraft safety and occupant protection. Helicopters have come a long way from their early days, when the first helicopters were much less dependable. 
Relentless testing of these machines in climate-controlled environments and robust crash tests mean the helicopters of the future are much more effective machines. That's the end of this video. I hope you enjoyed it. Make sure to subscribe to this channel so you don't miss any of our new content. See you next time.